Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for joining me for another video. Today, I'm gonna be going into my journey on how I saved 146th, <laughs> how I saved $146,000 before turning 30. Let's get into it. I'm going to give you some key points before we get into the numbers so you guys have an idea of what my background is like and where I'm coming from in terms of socioeconomic background. So first of all, I did not go to post-secondary school. I have a high school education and that is it. I did have plans to go to college, however, it never worked out. So me being able to save this amount of money has nothing to do with me having a higher education. Second thing is that I didn't receive any kind of large lump sum payments or help from any of my family members. I didn't inherit a bunch of money from a relative. The money that I was able to save is from my own pocket and my own work income. The next thing is that in order for me to get to a higher income, I had to work my way up the corporate ladder in a bit of a different way. I started in various administration roles where I worked my way up into a sales role. This is where the majority of my savings came from when I had a few good years in sales and was bringing in near six figures. I also worked part-time on the side of my full-time job for about four years, and this brought in a little bit extra income so that I could pad my savings, but also live the lifestyle that I wanted. The next thing is FIRE, so financial independence, retire early. This is a community that I had discovered on Reddit after browsing and reading through Personal Finance and Personal Finance Canada. Those are subreddits on Reddit as well. So once I figured out that fire was a big thing and it was up and coming and the community was growing, I delved into it. I went to the library and got so many different books on personal finance and investing. And I took a deep dive into learning all about what it takes to become financially independent and learn how to save money and invest it properly. I also started to track my expenses and this was a big thing for me before I had started to track my expenses. I wasn't really sure where my money was going. This was a big step in allowing me to take control of my finances. Knowledge is power and even if you have a lower income, don't be discouraged. You can still take control of your financial life and get your finances in order to set yourself up for a fantastic future and retirement. My net worth peaked in December, 2021 at 146,000 dollars but it has gone down since then because I have made a lot of changes in my life. My net worth currently sits at $127,000, but this video is going to take you from my journey from $0 net worth up to $146,000. Now we're going to go through chronologically from 2015 to 2021, how much I made each year and how much I saved and what I ended up doing with that money to put myself in a position to get to that net worth. Initially back in 2015, I started by just saving cash. I didn't have any investment accounts. I just started putting some money aside while I was working to try to figure out what I really wanted out of life. In 2015, I made 35,000 Canadian dollars after taxes and ended up saving $10,000. I opened up a TFSA or tax-free savings account and I made sure that I got an RRSP and made sure to get the full max that I could at work. Around this time, I started to invest with GICs or guaranteed income certificates that had a two to 3% interest rate and they were normally for a fixed fixed amount of time between one and three years. The reason why I started to invest with GICs is because I was very risk averse. I had never had such a large lump sum of money and I was super afraid of losing it. In 2016, I went into a sales role, into an inside sales role and started to grow my income. That year I made just under $44,000 after taxes and I saved 11,000. In 2017, my sales started to increase and I saw another income increase to $55,000 take home that year. Out of that, I ended up saving $20,000 and I was super pleased with getting my expenses down to a point where I could save this much. In 2018, I had my highest income year. My take home income was $71,000 after tax and I saved $23,000 that year. This was the year that I maxed my TFSA. TFSA 
days have a cap. It's added to every single year. At the time, the cap was around $65,000. At this time, I was still only investing in GICs outside of whatever fund I had at my workplace through my RRSP. So as you can see, my expenses really started to inflate every time I had an income increase, which is known as lifestyle inflation. I did live alone from 2017 to 2019, so my expenses were quite a bit higher than normal. Over that three-year period, I averaged about $45,000 a year in expenses. Within that time frame, I also got Invisalign, and that cost me out of pocket $6,000. It wasn't until 2019 that I actually started a spreadsheet, a physical budget where I actually tracked every single expense and every single amount of income. That year I made $67,000 of take home income and I saved just $16,000. In 2020, I made $57,000 and I ended up saving $23,000 that year. The reasons why my income started to go down at this time was because I switched jobs to a competitor in the same industry midway through 2019 and it didn't really work out. I wasn't happy at this place. So only eight months later, I ended up switching to a different company. I ended up really not liking either of these employers that I had switched to and was starting to feel trapped in an industry I really didn't want to be in. Then the COVID layoffs started and I ended up getting laid off from the job that I was in that I really wasn't enjoying. Once COVID started to lift up a bit, I ended up rejoining the previous company that had laid me off during the beginnings of COVID and worked there for another six months or so. In 2021, I took home $55,000 in after-tax income and saved $28,000. This was my biggest savings year. At the beginning of 2021, I purchased a condominium. So a big chunk of my savings went into real estate. I decided to leave my corporate job and leave that whole corporate life behind at the end of 2021 to pursue passions and a better life. I really wasn't happy with my work-life balance and I felt like something needed to change. 2021 was my biggest savings year and I had a savings rate of over 50 it definitely wasn't my highest income year, but I was able to really discipline myself and get my expenses very low. Debts that I had finally paid off in 2021, like my car payment, so that stopped cutting into my savings every month as well. Because I purchased property this year, I have started to build equity instead of the majority of money going towards rent and not going towards my net worth. By this stage, I had learned a lot more about investing and I had started out investing through Canadian couch potatoes model portfolios. I went and invested all of the money that I had that wasn't in real estate or in my RRSP in the TDE series line. And I had those investments in there for at least a year. Later on, I did move my investments to a Vanguard all equity fund, but this was just within the last couple of years. So I'm not going to talk too much about it in this video. My net worth peaked in December, 2021. This is when it hit $146,000. By this time, I had just turned turned 30 and well surpassed my original goal of hitting $100,000 net worth before turning 30. So since December 2021, I actually have not worked full time, nor have I saved anything. I have been coast fire for the last couple of years because I worked so hard for the years that I worked in a sales role and was able to amass this amount of net worth and savings. It's allowed me to really open up my options and live the life that I would want to live if money was not an issue. I'm really drawn to traveling and living a slower life. My dream home and lifestyle would be living somewhere where I'm completely self-sufficient, I have my own garden, and I don't need to rely on work in order to provide me with an income. Now, of course, I come from a slightly privileged position in that I am white and come from North America. So I have certain privileges in my life that allowed me to even pursue opportunities to make this amount of money. It's not as inaccessible as a lot of people believe. You don't need to have higher education. You don't need to have parents that completely support you and pay for all of your expenses in order to work on yourself, increasing your income, cutting your expenses, and taking on different projects to set yourself up for a better future. So I hope this video gave you guys some insight into how I'm able to live the life that I live now, and it inspires you to potentially do the same. Leave me a comment down below about what you would do with your life if you had this amount amount of net worth and savings. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye.